Have you ever wondered what makes an airplane fly? Airplanes, in all their different shapes and sizes, share one common feature. Wings. It's these wings that generate most of the lift required to hoist the weight of the airplane, its fuel, passengers and cargo, into the air. To create this lift, an airplane must be thrust forward, pushing through the air. That's where the air's resistance comes in, presenting itself as aerodynamic drag. The wings are designed to combat this drag, and on modern airliners, they're equipped with something called winglets at their tips. These curved extensions are not just for aesthetics, they play a crucial role in reducing drag, making the plane more aerodynamic and fuel efficient. But of course, overcoming drag and generating lift isn't enough to keep an airplane in the sky. It needs thrust, a forward force that counteracts drag and propels the airplane forward through the air. This thrust comes from the engines. On most commercial airplanes, you'll see these engines as large turbine structures located beneath the wings. They suck in huge amounts of air, compress it, mix it with fuel and ignite it. The resulting forceful stream of hot gas pushes the airplane forward. However, not all airplanes use turbine engines. Smaller, low-speed airplanes often use propellers instead. These propellers work by spinning rapidly to push air backwards and, as Newton's third law tells us, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the air pushes back on the propeller, moving the airplane forward. So, you see, an airplane's wings and engines have a symbiotic relationship. The wings provide the lift and reduce drag, while the engines provide the necessary thrust to overcome that drag and move the airplane forward. Together, they make the seemingly impossible act of flying a heavy metal bird possible. So, the wings and the engines work together to lift the airplane off the ground and propel it forward. Next time you're on a flight, take a moment to appreciate this marvel of engineering. Now let's move to the tail end of the airplane. You might think the action is all in the wings and engines, but don't be fooled. There's a lot happening in the tail. This is where we find the vertical and horizontal stabilizers. These aren't just for show. They play a crucial role in keeping the aircraft stable and on course. Imagine you're in a car. The vertical stabilizer is like your steering wheel, stopping the airplane's nose from swinging side to side in a movement known as yaw. Without it, we'd be zigzagging through the sky, and that's not a fun ride for anyone. Then we have the horizontal stabilizer. Think of this as your car's speed bumps, preventing an up and down motion of the nose called pitch. With these two stabilizers, our aircraft is kept steady and straight. But how do we change direction? Enter the rudder and elevator. Attached to the stabilizers, these movable parts allow us to steer the plane. The rudder, attached to the vertical stabilizer, moves the tail left and right. The elevator, attached to the horizontal stabilizer, moves the tail up and down. Just like a bird adjusts its tail feathers for a perfect landing, these parts help in maneuvering the airplane. Controlled by the pilots, they ensure that the aircraft can make those subtle shifts that keep us on course and bring us safely to our destination. The stabilizers, rudder and elevator all work together to keep the airplane balanced and heading in the right direction. Moving back to the wings, Let's look at some more parts. Now, you may notice additional hinge sections near the body of the airplane. These are known as flaps. During takeoff and landing, flaps are deployed downwards to increase the force produced by the wing. This force, or lift, helps the airplane ascend and descend more efficiently. But flaps aren't the only pieces working hard during these critical moments of flight. On some aircraft, you'll also find the front part of the wing deflecting. These are the slats. Like their counterparts, slats are used at takeoff and landing to produce additional lift. Now let's turn our attention to the spoilers. Spoilers are small plates that disrupt the flow over the wing. When deployed, they change the amount of force by decreasing the lift. This might sound counterproductive, but it's actually a crucial function. During landing, spoilers are used to slow the plane down, counteracting the lift generated by the flaps. And when the aircraft is on the ground, spoilers help maintain balance and control. So as you can see, flaps, slats and spoilers each play a pivotal role in controlling the airplane's movement and ensuring a safe journey from takeoff to touchdown. Next time you're on a plane, take a moment to watch how the wing shape changes during takeoff and landing. Last but not least, let's talk about the fuselage. The fuselage is the main body of the aircraft and it's this central structure that holds all the other key components of the airplane together. Think of it as the backbone of the plane, providing the necessary structure and strength that allows it to withstand the rigors of flight. Now, 
The fuselage is more than just a hollow tube. It's a complex structure that houses various important parts of the aircraft. At the front of the fuselage, we find the cockpit. This is where the pilots sit, surrounded by an array of controls and instruments that allow them to navigate and control the aircraft. It's like the command centre of the airplane, where all major decisions regarding the flight are made. Moving along the fuselage, we come to the passenger and cargo areas. These are located in the rear of the fuselage. The passenger area, or the cabin as it's often called, is where we, the travellers, spend most of our time during a flight. It's designed for comfort, safety and efficiency. The seats, overhead bins, galleys and restrooms all are part of this area. The cargo area, on the other hand, is where luggage and goods are stored during the flight. It's typically located below the passenger area and is meticulously organised to ensure the weight is evenly distributed for a stable flight. Lastly, let's talk about fuel storage. Some aircraft carry fuel in the fuselage, while others carry the fuel in the wings. This is an important consideration because the location of the fuel can affect the centre of gravity of the plane, which in turn influences its stability and performance. So you see, the fuselage is quite an intricate and crucial part of the airplane. It's not just a shell, but a meticulously designed structure that houses the key components of the aircraft, contributing significantly to its overall function and performance. From nose to tail, every part of an airplane has a specific function that allows it to fly safely and efficiently.